So I would like to start this webinar um, by uh, saying uh, a big welcome to all participants. Um, I'm very pleased to welcome you for this new series of webinars of acrobatic gymnastics proposed by European Gymnastic. Um, I also would like to take this opportunity to wish you a wonderful year 2021 uh, with a lot of success in acrobatics and in your lives. In this very difficult time, it's a great pleasure to see you all online. For acrobatics, this uh, webinar is the first event of 2021 to share knowledge between the acrobatics community. And I would like to thank European Gymnastics and especially Farid Gariboff, the president of European Gymnastics, to offer us this uh, opportunity. These webinars have a great success that starts to spread all over the world over the border of Europe. Um, and today I would like to welcome some new guests from Iran. Um, we also have some guests uh, from FIG. I, I saw earlier that uh, Frank Baum is uh, connected, is uh, uh, there for all our uh, webinars. So welcome to uh, uh, the FIG TC members. And of course, I would like to uh, welcome all participants from more than 20 countries. Just a few uh, quick information about the running of this webinar. Uh, you have received in the email uh, that uh, your camera will always be disconnected as well as your microphone, but you will have the possibility to talk. Uh, you can use whether the chat, as I just told you, or the Q&A uh, section. Uh, we will always uh, talk in English. And uh, when you have a question for our expert, you can use the Q&A section and I will pass them on to them. Um, just for your information, but I think now you're used of this, uh, the, this webinar is recorded and it will be accessible on the YouTube channel of European Gymnastics. So you can always review um, the webinar on the YouTube channel. Let's talk a little bit uh, specifically about this webinar. Uh, we are now in the first of the series of three webinars where uh, the best coaches of Europe will present uh, several subjects on how to build the complexity in acrobatics. The main goal is to share the experience and the knowledge of the coaches with a practical approach based on what you as coach need. Today, our webinar will be divided in two parts. We will start uh, with um, uh, Lorenzo Franca. He will present us uh, um, the twisting rotation with a very original approach uh, based on experience and practical aspects. Um, there will be, of course, a little bit of theory, but that will be included in the presentation. Uh, and the second very main topic that was really uh, asked a lot uh, we will talk uh, about the one arm with uh, Revaz, the expert of one arm. So everything you need to know about one arm uh, for bases and tops, the technique, the progression, uh, well, everything you need to know. So every time, just uh, do not hesitate to use the Q&A section. And uh, after each presentation, we will uh, take uh, a few minutes to uh, answer your questions so the experts are here also to, to uh, give you answers. So today we are very honored to welcome um, our two special guests that will uh, deliver and share with us uh, their knowledge. Uh, so first, Lorenzo Franca, I know both of them, we don't need to present them to you now, but uh, just a few, a few words. Uh, Lorenzo, so you all know, is the head coach of the Acro Club of Maya. Um, is also the coach of uh, members of uh, national teams of Portugal since 1999. Uh, as a coach, you know him with uh, the great results, uh, with a, a medalist at European and World Championships. Uh, and also is uh, an FIG academy expert and a physical education teacher. Uh, Revaz, uh, you all know as a former champion, in acrobatics, uh, world champion, European champion, world games winner. Uh, and now um, he became a, a, a coach uh, with lots of success too, uh, with uh, the European games winner, European champions, 
so I'm just gonna uh, stop the talk now and uh, give them the floor and we will uh, start immediately uh, with uh, Lorenzo. Hi. So I give you the floor. Thanks, Thank thanks you. for you to, to be <laughs> Thank here. You. Thank you, Karim. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, hi, Revaz. Hi, everyone. Um, we, I think we, we, I can start sharing the, the screen, right? Yeah. Okay, let's go. So, um, well, the, the general idea of the, the presentation was to give some practical knowledge, some practical experiments on uh, twisting rotation in acro. Um, when, when UAG proposed this to, to, to me, um, I, I thought that we could try something a bit different. I, I've never tried it myself, but um, the, the, the time frame was pretty suitable to, to make it. So what, what I've did was um, a 30 day experiment. I took a girl uh, with no, no background on, on twisting. Um, she barely can make uh, a straight salto and with trainings um, during uh, some, some period of time, 30 days, not 30 trainings, not, not, not as far, um, trying to reach uh, as, as maximum as, as far as possible. So we can go from the basics to uh, acro on a twisting uh, level. The, the thing is that we, we have decided that uh, there was not, no chance to make um, forward twisting in this 30, 45 minutes uh, presentation. So we focus on the back twisting, especially also because it's one of the most um, kind of twisting that we have in acro. We don't have too much forward twisting. Uh, so we focus on that. And we conduct an, a really an experiment, a practical experiment um, with, with some of my, my gymnasts. So I, I started on December 8 and I finished on uh, January 13. Um, yesterday, January 15, um, Portugal entered in lockdown. So if the experiment wasn't uh, successful, um, I didn't have too much to present because uh, we had to close. Um, but at, at least we had some, well, we, we can always uh, get to the end and say, okay, in 30 days, that there's no chance I, I was able to make it. But uh, the general thing was to make something every coach can do with some basic equipment I've tried different approaches on the trampoline, on the mini trampoline. Okay, I don't have a trampoline. Let's go on a mini trampoline. I don't have a mini trampoline. You must have something, okay? Uh, you must have something to uh, propel the kids, the gymnasts in the air. Otherwise, it will pretty much be uh, not, not, not that easy to teach these kind of skills. So, um, I've started with one girl and went uh, to uh, to try with other gymnasts, uh, also with bases. Well, I have I have something for you to 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 see. The starting point was this one, uh, really rudimentary notion of the back straight salto, far from perfect, but some ideas and no tilting uh, twist notion. Okay, so here it is. Uh, step by step, um, what we have done. So the, the first step is always the same. So the gymnast needs to understand that they have to have some trust to fall backwards. I have a pit on my gym and with those young kids like three, five years old, when they come on the gym and you, you ask them when they are jumping on the trampoline and making some forward roll on the pit, everyone can make it because they can see where they are going and they make almost somersault you know it's 
funny cat somersault forward, but it's something. But if you put them backwards, you know, the back facing the pit and say, now jump backwards, everyone will look on the shoulder to see where they are. So the first thing we do is exactly that one, falling backwards. Okay, so falling on, on, on the unknown. And this is everything we, we've done. Um, we are without masks, uh, although it's uh, December, because the, the guinea pig is, is my daughter. So uh, we are in the same bubble. Um, the key points. So the hands lead the motion, chest up or shoulders up straight feet, like if they are jumping, like half point, and a lot of trust. Um, this is another example because you, you have to repeat and repeat and repeat. As, as close to perfection, you see chest up and falling. Mm, this was not that good because here we go. I, 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 I record the good ones and the bad ones and I show you so you can see the mistakes and the corrections the coaches need to do. So in this case, the shoulders fall first and you, you don't want that hollow position. Uh, you want the hips um, up, the hands, um, the hands falling first. In this case, shoulders and hips were falling. The, the, the body was not that rigid. So let's see another try. This one, better one this one a better one. So second step, we start jumping. We start jumping always with the coach and the idea is the same, falling backwards, okay? So key points, the hands lead the motion uh, because the hands are doing the back salto, not any other part of the body, chest up or shoulders up, jump together with the coach, although it's the coach that jumps, and trying to land as flat as possible, hands, shoulders, hips, and feet all together in, um, in, in the same uh, landing. So, so a little bit higher, exactly the same. You see I'm conducting the movement, and when the body is totally flat, I uh, allow the gymnast to fall on the back. Third step, three-quarter back uh, straight salto. And this is all the kind of manipulation we have to do. This was really, I'm showing you first attempt of first attempt, okay? With really uh, barely none notion of um, what was need to, to be done. So what are the key points I explained the gymnast? Uh, again, hands lead the, the, the movement, chest up, chin on chest, which is really important for this three-quarter notion, because if they put the chin up, the shoulders will go down and not helping the shoulders go up. Jump together with me, and after the jump, and this is where the magic happens, the hands drop really fast, towards the hips and the hips rotate towards the, the hands. So this is um, the most basic um, of Newton's law. Uh, it's, it's biomechanics, it's inertia. We can talk about it, but uh, this is not exactly in 30, 45 minutes. It's not the, the, the right place. But you have to understand that in the beginning, as the, the straight the body is, if you shorten one of the limbs, the body will rotate faster. I, I strongly advise you to watch Fred Yedem, um, um, magnific magnificent uh, teacher. Um, there, there's a lecture from UAG on, on the trampoline um, YouTube channel. Uh, you can look at it and you understand all the mechanics. Again, uh, in the end, a hollow shape just to protect the back, okay? So, let's see. So, it's exactly the same, a little bit better, just waiting in the beginning and then um, 
closing arms, hips start rotating. Okay, fourth step. We already know how to make the straight salto. We are trying to, trying to put the, the twist in the system. When I mean the system, I mean in the brain. Uh, so this is a complex skill. So we need to try the gymnast to understand what, what is happening. And I use this kind of simple drills, just lowering one arm and she will rotate by self. Um, take notice, I'm doing it with a little hop. So because the tilting action only happens when they are airborne, when they are in the air, otherwise it's, it's impossible. So key points, fast lowering the arm to change the body shape. So if, if the gymnast is with both arms and you, are, um, you, you separate in the middle, if you lower one arm, half of the body will be shorter and the other will be higher. And that means that when you lower one arm on a back salto, you will rotate, okay, towards the, the, um, the area you just lower, okay? Chin on chest, this is again uh, basic biomechanics. And um, the idea of this moment is that you start having the twisting with the straight salto putting that on gymnast brain. If you want to understand a little, a little bit more, I advise you to see the lecture on planning that I, I've made on, on for UEG uh, in, in, in December. So it's in YouTube uh, channel from, from UEG and it, it can give you some insight of the importance of the brain in this kind of activities. Um, so let's see what we can do. Up, up. You see, one arm, the other arm, full twist. Almost, uh, you know, with, with, with no knowledge. Okay. We are going a little bit deep. You see, I let the gymnast fall. And then when she jumps, she makes exactly the same thing. Lower the arm, she performs the half twist by self. Just to make it in the brain, okay? So let's see now, hop, really nice. Pretty much with my assistance, of course, but the, I wasn't expecting anything different. What are the key points? Fast lower the arm, chin on chest, and now we have started to uh, make the gymnast understand what is a salto with some kind of longitudinal rotation, okay? Always, uh, with a hollow shape, not too much, but this, um, this key thing to ask them, look at the toes, will help them to prevent that the chin goes backwards, okay? So let's see some more attempts. And here is a really common mistake. And what are the common mistakes we can find? First, the shoulders go forward. Okay, they don't go up like we did on the first videos, just jumping backwards, shoulders going up. If the shoulders go forward, everything will go down. Um, and what happened here, the twisting was started too early. So after the immediate jump, she will already start to making the twist. This will happen constantly. And you will have to be really strict, not allowing that to happen in, in this, fragile moment where you are, um, a, well, the brain is understanding the process, okay? So the twist should only uh, happen after the gymnast starts the straight salto. When he guarantees, okay, I'm doing a straight salto, I can start the twisting and not before, okay? So let's see some more. We need to go back constantly. And, okay, this was my mistake. It's recorded. Um, I've tried to help her. I, I, I wasn't that successful. So we've tried again. Again, just going back, off turn, land, and just a little help to make the, the twist. 
And now you can see here how, like a baby seal, you know, like uh, how, how soft she still is, because this is, you know, really the beginning of, of everything. Let's see now a, a, a slight different approach. We don't have a trampoline, but we have a mini trampoline. Okay, so what we are going to do, we are going to try to use uh, less manipulation, more air awareness. This normally demands gymnasts with more notion than the one I was trying on the trampoline. Um, they have more control and they especially understand where the shoulders should go or where the hands should go. We'll do exactly the same steps, falling backwards, three quarter, three quarter, 180, three quarter, full twist. Okay, so baby steps, first one, just going, going to angle. Just going backwards, different gymnasts, Muito bem. exactly the same. Some of the mistakes are exactly the mistakes I pointed before. Shoulders are falling backward and down. So you remember always hands lead the movement. Um, and, and if you start twisting too early, you will have a problem in there. So the twist should, should start. Uh, so if you, if you ask your gymnast, look to the helper, okay? There's someone spotting on, on the vault. So look to your helper before you start doing anything. Look at it and don't move your head. So chin on, on the chest. So these videos were recorded during Christmas. <laughs> That's why I have a costume and it was cold. Um, but we, we were celebrating Christmas uh, during this day. So you see after, really nice. Here with a little help because the, this gymnast has one problem and it's sure the straight salto is made. So I have to help her a little bit more and um, I, I, I'll just say not allowing her to twist until very late. So she can do straight salto first, al almost look at the mat and then make the twist. Um, and here is I do something like I put a little slope so I, I lower the mat and the mat is not flat is like here so when they land they will rotate okay everything is the, as the same objective putting the twist in the brain okay and here it is come and rotate until she falls on on the pit and this is the first full ever of this gymnast, okay? With, with my help, of course, but you, you can see clearly she lows, lowers one arm and after that she lowers the next and that is spot on. One and two, okay? Again, the same gymnast that has the the, the, the problem doing the, the straight saltos, she has too much hollow shape, but the twisting is getting there, which is uh, one of the important things. And here we go a little further with, with Clara. Nice one. And this one, even perfect. One and a half, really nice. So the, the same steps. Let's go back on the trampoline. Let's see with the, the same gymnast with some more trainings. You remember this was in a, in, a, in a gap of one month, okay? Much nicer, the, the three quarter. And I, I can assure you, I wasn't able in every training to make this. I sometimes I'm, I make it twice a week, once a week in, in, in some cases because we, we, we had other things to do and uh, I, I didn't want to, you know, the, 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 the life of the coach 
um, when they are going to see this presentation was, oh, I, I have to do this every day, otherwise it's impossible. No, it, it's, it's not that the case. You can see oh, much nicer the kick of the legs, so the, the three quarters is pretty much in there. Really nice with half turn. One more. And with another and hop. Half turn. Now I, I, I was good in spotting. I didn't make the same mistake. Nice. Well, I spoke too soon. I made a mistake here in spotter. That's why I fall down. Uh, I should help her sooner. Um, but this one was, was pretty nice. Even the hollow shaping in the end to protect the back, shoulders down. It was really, really a good demonstration. You see the timing, one arm, second arm, hollow shape really nice you know everything was getting there so i got a little carried away and finished the full twist for her so these are the key points when you arrive here you don't need to always say um, chin on the chest you just want the head to be neutral the hands are leading the way tilt of one arm after kicking the, the legs for the straight salto and finishing the rotation with the other arm, okay? So, seventh step, another approach. We don't have only tops at the gym and this is acrobatics twisting. So, you sometimes, you want your bases to make a twist, but they didn't learn when they were uh, smaller in a, in a portable way. So, you need to teach them with no manipulation uh, because they are big, because they are tall, because they are heavier. So there's some ways you can do it and they will do it by themselves. Again, you need an elastic surface. Uh, in my case, I need an, an elastic surface. Probably there are others. I use this one. So the gymnast has the control of the takeoff and um, they will get the twisting awareness, okay, from here. So just, this is an old video, um, but this is, this is how they started and how they understand. So just the back flick, you see, they get control of the hands, just the back flick um, to, to chest, and then pretty much the same, go and lowering one arm, and off turn. And we go from there. So this was many years ago. <laughs> they were, I think, 11, 16, and they were seniors last year. So, uh, and, and they, they, they perform full twist and they learn it by, by this way. So let's see some more training on the trampoline and where we are at the moment. So you, you can understand this was a, a time frame of a month. Now we are almost like two weeks ago. So, so nice, no coach, off twist with just, you know, nice kick of the arms, shoulders up. Let's see this one. The plan was slightly different, different from, and a little bit, well, it was double twist, um, but the plan was not that one. This was the mistake. She was shoulders uh, too far. So if you rotate too much, if you give too much rotation on the um, uh, transversal axis, you will rotate more in the longitudinal axis. So, and that's what happened. She was rotating more, uh, spinning, twisting more because she accelerated the shoulders backwards. Um, with another gymnast, a little bit too much acceleration from the shoulders. You see, and that's why she land on the feet first. But then she understand, and this one was 
really, really nice. Just, you see? Perfect. Okay. And after all this trampoline and mini trampoline, we wanted to try uh, if it was possible to go on the, the, um, the 1116 trio of um, the, the gymnast I used um, as a demonstrator. So we, on, uh, we, we went on the twisting belt and we start with exactly the same things, lowering one arm, half turn. So you see, hands, kick, drop one arm, leave the other up. And I just for you to see, you see hands, kick of the leg, lower one arm, keeping the other up. So arms there, you see the kick. And this is really nice. It's like the shoulders and the hands have stopped in these two frames. And you see the body with a huge kick to allow the straight salto. And that's what you want to see. And only after that, you drop the arm and you initiate the twist. Okay? It was really nice tries. So again, half turn, another day. Okay? This was not that perfect because she already made a full turn some days before and she was all, uh, a little bit faster and tilting. So not dropping the, the arm as much as she could. And then we try the full twist. One, two. And they were really surprised when they make it. This was the first attempt and they were really like, wow, landing on the feet. Uh, it, it, it happened, something here. So hands, kick, drop one arm, drop the other, and then the, the untilt. So it's exactly the same. Hands, first arm after the kick, second arm, and then the untilting with opening the arm. Okay, it's exactly what we were talking about. Okay, so another try, another day, one, two. It, it's not perfect, it was not alone, but then uh, the days were uh, running short. And then we said, maybe we already did some tries on the belt uh, enough. So let's try everything out. Uh, with my assistance, we perform exactly the same things. So jumping, lowering, landing. One arm. This was um, exactly what we have done step by step. And this was the first time they perform a full twist. Exactly the same technique. Of course, the she has more air, um, she's airborne, she has more space in the air, so, so more time to make the full twist. Um, this was the second attempt, okay? Just one, two, full twist, and then my full twist, I fall, <laughs> I fall down. Um, so here are the key points, you know, we've made it. Um, Hands lead the way, head neutral, eyes looking forward. Don't let them um, uh, take the chin out of the chest because that will make shoulders going down. Tilt one arm after the kicking of the body that will start the rotation and then finish the rotation with the other arm and, and tilt with the second arm to finish and to help the bases to grasp. So, you can see it's in the brain of the gymnast. And that's what, what's important. If I can make it on competition, I, I can't. At the moment, I can't. We will need many more, you know. I think probably more time to make it safely on a 100% on a, a sure um, try. To, it will take me some more, more time. But the good thing, it's in the brain of the gymnast. And this is, you know, as, as truth as, as it can be, from 8th of December, this was the first time we've tried something like this. Really nice. First attempt to the last one, 
was 13 of January. And it, it was done. So it was around 12 trainings, really strict with the basis, with the, the basics, okay, really strict. I did not one single mistake go without correction. So, and every time I start with the same, falling backwards, remember this, falling backwards. Even today, I, f I finished the training and we were in the mini trampoline with some of the kids. And the first thing is always, and stand jumping, falling backwards. Only after we start with, uh, with the three quarters and the, the half turn and things like that. So um, it was this, so 30 days experiment, 30 minutes presentation, um, well, spot on. Thank you for, for the gymnast that was really patient with me uh, and Karin and UAGTC for the invitation. And thank you all for watching online and any questions you may have, I'm, I'm here for you. You, you have my email um, or Facebook or something. So thank you all, Karin. Um, let's, let's hear some yeah. questions. If thanks, thanks a lot, Lorenzo, for this uh, wonderful uh, presentation and experimentation. I think it's really helping the coaches. So I think we can uh, uh, use a little bit of time now to uh, listen to our participants, to listen to their questions, because I'm sure they all have some. So please use the Q&A section uh, or the chat. We already have uh, one question from uh, Regis. Um, how do you determine the direction of the twist? Um, well, I, I didn't. I you, we we have we do something in my in my gym. Um, all the girls you saw there started um, gymnast here uh, in my club around three four years old, and we with all the gymnasts they all rotate to the left. Uh, so I didn't determine too many things. Sometimes we see that they are not going the correct way and we try rotation on the right, but 99% of the cases, it's, it's a, a correct approach that we do for us. I, I, I don't want you to use it as a recipe, but for us, all the gymnasts, they rotate, they twist on the left. They make everything from the round off to the half turn, to the full turn, everything they do on the left. Sometimes a, 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 an older gymnast comes, sometimes from another club and they uh, have a rotation on the right. It's okay, it's, it's perfectly natural. We'll do it on the same, but you know, um, Pretty much everything in nature uh, is rotates on on the left. So the herd, <clears throat> sorry, the herd spins to the left. You go on on a track and field, um, and you 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 make the four hundred meters to the left. So everything it's it's on that direction. So I'm not saying that we are uh, hundred percent right, and you should do that. I'm just saying that we do that and we are really adapted to that system and all the coaches on the club in the acro area, they will start with the kids when they arrive at three to five, six, seven years old, eight years old, and they will start everything to make them, to have them rotating on the left. So we, we have a question from Tom that is linked to this saying, what if your gymnast does a round off on the right, would you still prefer left twist in the salto? No, if, if he makes the round off um, that's, that way, um, that's because he, he, he didn't start with us, first point. 
Um, so he, he comes from an, another uh, another club probably, um, and then of course he will rotate on on the left on the right. That there will be no problem whatsoever. Okay, thank you. We have a question from Nina. Um, how do you get from one to two twist, and how can the gymnast get more twisting speed? So it's pretty much basic biomechanics. So you start with one twist by lowering one arm. And that's all you need to understand and all they need to understand. But if you want to increase the number of twisting, you have to use the other arm as fast as possible. So if you want to go from one to two, and in, imagine in this case, all the gymnasts were lowering the left to start rotation, and then they will lowering the right to finish it. But the, the genus that she was doing one and a half, everything she was doing is beginning the twist with the left and fast with the right. And that was more than enough to make the uh, one and a half uh, um, double twist, triple twist, anything you need. It's from the other arm making a fast, a really, really fast, not soon, but fast movement starting um, or continuing the, um, the, the, the movement of, of the twist. Thank you, Lorenzo. Um, I have a question. Uh, in your presentation, you made the choice to uh, use the, the aerial uh, twisting, meaning uh, starting the rotation uh, in the air. Uh, there are some other um, approach of the twisting that are used also in other disciplines, uh, which is the, to start the twisting during the contact. Um, why did you make this choice? Well, especially because this should be an acro approach. So I don't want no, uh, no flyer, no top, to start twi twisting uh, on the contact of the bases or on the platform. The, the contact, uh, we call it the, the torque twist, it, 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 it happens mostly in, in artistic gymnastics, in aerobics, sometimes in rhythmics, but normally it comes with, a, well, I will not say penalty, but if you don't have too much uh, fly time, and you can have it in artistic because it's a sprung, uh, sprung floor and they fly high. But in aerobics, for example, it's a wooden floor. They will not jump that high. And every time you need to make a torque twist, you probably will have some kind of penalty. So this should be a, a webinar related to acro. And now I don't want no twisting starting in the contact of the partners. Thanks for your answer. Um, at the minute, we do not have any other questions, but maybe, Revas, would you uh, like to uh, complete the presentation and share your experience about the twisting? Hello again. Uh, it was so nice and uh, it was very interesting. And uh, I also loved uh, some kind of uh, experiments. Uh, and uh, I, I was, it was really nice to see it. And uh, it, actually about me, in my club, we, we prefer one thing. Uh, when we want to recognize to uh, which direction uh, the kid will rotate, uh, actually what we do, uh, uh, we put in, we stand in behind the, the kid. Uh, the kid close the eyes and we just clap and he reacts. So it's like a little bit nature. So it's just just how we do it. So, but it's like not every day, everything yeah. we practice. Those, those kind of, of simple drills with the young kids are really nice. When 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 the, the the coach just want them to run in one direction, puts them facing backwards that direction, uh, ask them to close the eyes and clap the hand or in a signal, you must turn and run and you know, that will give you some kind of idea of what is the fastest for him 
to start the running on the opposite side. So it, it, will, it, it can give you an idea of what is the good rotation side for, for him. Yeah, it's, it's those kind of nice, fun drills are really, really good for the kids. Thank you. We have a question from uh, Eve. Uh, what do you do uh, with the base turning right and flyer left uh, to catch in twist? Which side you prefer? For example, from handstand to handstand. Um, I will not change. Uh, I'm, 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 I must say that I didn't understand too much the question, but I will not change none of, of the, the, um, the sides of the twisting of both, but I prefer always the twisting to the left. Um, it, it is also my natural side, uh, side for help. I can help on the other side because I have some of the kids that came from other uh, clubs that, for example, when they are do their tumbling passes and they are doing round off uh, back flick full, full twist and, and you have to help them. Yeah, you, you have to understand where you should go, what kind of spot spotters uh, your arms sh should be doing. And that's something you, you train also. But I, I tell you that um, uh, although I'm a, a little bit dyslexic with the left and right, uh, so I always have to think really nice when some of my kid uh, turns on, on the side that's not normal um, for me to help. I ask them to eight, wait and I train, I practice myself. What, what I, should I be doing? Like he should practice and then I, I, I'm, I'm capable of helping him. Okay, great. Um, we have Iron to raise the the end. Is it a mistake or do you have a question? Um, otherwise, I think we will uh, uh, change the subject. I would like to say that uh, we are very, very lucky to have uh, two experts like you are, Lorenzo and Rebaz, uh, with all this level and that you accept to share all this knowledge uh, it's really a privilege and I would like to thank you both again for accept, accepting to do uh, this uh, webinar with us. Um, it gives so many interesting uh, information. So I would like to take this opportunity while the, the participants can still um, write some questions, but really, really thank you. Uh, it's an honor for us and it's a big privilege. So thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Karin. Thank you very much. I, I just want to say one thing. This was pretty much a risk uh, to me to, to, to make a presentation like this, but the thing when you present something or you, when you want to teach something or when you want to show something is that you also need to learn. And uh, I, I need to learn a lot to, 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 to be able to present this. So although it was a little bit a gamble, will I be able to make it? Will the girl be able to make it? Um, will I have time to make this in 30 days? Probably I, I wouldn't, but you know, it, it, is, it is possible, it is doable. Um, and we are not talking about super talents. Um, so it, it's, it's something we all can maybe try, maybe different, maybe do another things probably, but it, it is a good thing when we do this kind of uh, webinars, the, the, the volume of information that we also, we that are giving it also um, obtain and learn, it's, it's, it's really uh, something. So I, I really thank you all and thank you, Karin, uh, to, to have this opportunity. Thank you, Lorenzo. And we know that uh, you are in a position that it's really so not so easy to present like this with no real interaction. It's not the yeah. same uh, as when we are face to face with uh, with people. So I propose that we now um, give the floor to Revaz and that we spend a little bit of time to uh, speak about uh, the one arm, which is, uh, um, I would say, something like uh, essential in acrobatics. It is uh, what is representing acrobatics, doing one arm in one arm, is uh, the element that is really typical for the high level in acrobatics. So um, Revaz, uh, I would like to uh, give you the floor. 
Um, just one thing before, because we have, we have one last question, Lorenzo, for you, so we can have to really stop the subject on the full twist. Uh, a last question from Alfredo. Uh, for a full in back salto, the arms, um, the full, I, I don't really understand the, the English, the full has better use the arms straight or bent. Okay, so I suppose the question, uh, uh, when you do the, the full twist in the full in back salto, uh, what is the position of the, of the arms, straight or bent? Well, um, just a, a previous explanation. I've done this, all the presentation with straight arms because it's easier to make the transfer to the, to the um, um, bent arms than the opposite. And if you see uh, what is the most perfect shape is with straight arms. And that's uh, where I went. So it will be easy for, uh, if you can recall on the presentation when the girl was doing from the mini trampoline one and a half, she was already bending and it was pretty much natural. I didn't ask her to make, I just asked her to make small faster push uh, on, on the right arm and she immediately, she bent it. So if, if it's a, a straight salto, uh, a, a double layout uh, with a full twist, I will totally prefer to make it with straight arms. But if it's it, it's a um, a tuck salt or or a pucks or a, um, a a tuck or a pike, I will probably prefer to make it bent because I, I will probably enter faster in the rotation. Great, thank you. All right, so now let's give the floor to uh, Revaz, and uh, we are listening to you now about uh, the one arm for the balance scale. Thanks, Revaz. Uh, thank you, Karim, for the presentation and. Uh, I will start immediately with the presentation with my screen sharing. Okay. Uh, the yes, subject it of our... It's okay, it works? Yes, it works. Oh yeah. Okay, the topic of our presentation, it's a uh, one-arm handstand. Uh, but uh, uh, I want to go a little bit wider and uh, I just wanna to talk to you about the handstands, about the something about stability of the handstands, also about the different shapes, and uh, in this topic, I also add the little bit information about the special transitions of the base. So, introduction: one arm handstand is one of the most necessary elements in acrobatic gymnastics. It can be done in different types and points of support. It is performed in some variation on all events. The benefits of training and learning of one arm handstands are clear to the coaches and gymnasts. So the scope of this presentation is to show a systematic training methodology to learn the one arm handstand. How I said before, we will split it in three topics. So the first one, for three parts, it will be one arm handstand stability. Uh, there will be some drills for the bases and tops. Um, after that, we'll talk a little bit about the transitions of the base. And uh, because we have no enough, enough of time, uh, I uh, choose, uh, for example, one of the most popular motion. It's like, uh, it's uh, quite difficult, but uh, we'll talk about the sitting with the turn motion. And uh, also we'll talk about the, some, some of the shapes of the handstand. And in this part, I choose the flag. So uh, speaking of the handstand stability, to provide stability, uh, the shape of the handstand, I suggest you the following exercise. Uh, we need to place your hands as close to the wall as possible without your stomach touching the wall and stretching out the shoulders and shoulder blades. Toes should push up against, should push, uh, against the wall. And uh, this will add to uh, stability, both uh, to shoulders and hands and uh, corrects the line of the handstand as well. Uh, the next exercise we will do is the side walking in a handstand. In this movement, it's really easy to teach an athlete how to move or transfer the weight from the two hands to one. 
However, do not forget to work in both direction. To your gymnast needs to develop both sides equally. So, uh, first we will start with a straight one arm handstand. Uh, just like in a regular handstand, we extend the entire line of the top body and uh, as much as possible. Only after that, they let go to one arm. Try to hold this position for at least a minute. Of course, we will start like around from 20, 30 second, say, seconds, and uh, we need to increase the timing to almost to one minute. Now we'll see from the another angle. Please note how from this side, you can clearly see uh, how the athlete maintains their body line. So you can see here the hand, the shoulder, the pelvis and toes straight up. So working on a handstand in a candle position, we continue to follow the structural line of the element. Like I said before, the hand, shoulder, pelvis and toes. We do this with the minimal spotting on the blocks. Same logic, we use the performing the regular one arm handstand. So it's similar. Any balance element is structurally the same. So how you can see here. And uh, when you feel that all areas are stable enough uh, when working individually, uh, you can proceed to work in pair. But firstly, I want to speak a little bit about the preparations for the base. So for the base strength, we exercise, we do exercises with a kettlebell, gradually increasing a weight, use uh, the kettlebell from the 16 to 32 kilograms. To prepare the wrist most efficiently perform with the 32 kilograms kettlebell. In this exercise, the shoulder, wrist, and the back of the base will all strain it while they perform their position. This will give outstanding improvements to the athlete when working in pairs, so the base will be stronger. We also should not forget that we need to develop the sense of the balance. Uh, with that in mind, I recommend this exercise, working with the various long poles. When we do these exercises, make sure that the base position is correct and the hips do not fall forward. Otherwise, the entire load will be on the lower back and the heels, and it will lead us to instability. So we should step, uh, we should hold and stand a little bit uh, on the frontal part of our feet. So speaking, speaking of working in pairs, I want to note that we have different different options and various options of the grip, how we hold in our wrists and fingers. So uh, in my personal language, uh, I use like, it's, it's my term, uh, like triangle of stability. So you see on the left slide, uh, the top should squeeze the fingers uh, closer to the center. Uh, in this picture, you can see which ones, and uh, most and the most uh, point of pressure uh, located between the thumb and index fingers. So normally we can do it on the head, one arm handstand, and as well we do it on the, on the hands, hands to hands. So when we do it hands to hands on middle slide, you you can see the picture when we use the two fingers which goes along the hand. And as well, uh, the one finger in the middle and the two others to the sides. It's also like, like more comfortable for your gymnasts. So when we start working in a pair, we try to keep the same position where the balance controls all the balance. When we're working on the hands, like hand to hand, you should always forget, uh, always remember that uh, 
all balance movements uh, performed from the from the base. They they goes from the base. When performing one arm handstand element with the base the straight arm, they still have to power up, uh, have the power to over the balance. In order to start doing it correctly, I suggest that the coach stays close and assists, like you see in these pictures. Normally, this should be almost at the level of the coach size. And coach normally looks uh, to the highest top position. And uh, in the beginning, in the uh, beginning of learning, he helps uh, for the base, to, uh, firstly, to hold the wrist stronger and uh, with a little bit uh, reducing the pressure uh, with time. And uh, as well, he shows to the base to what direction uh, he should move to, to save the top, to save the, the balance, to keep balance. In addition to physical strength, athletes must also develop their coordination skills, meaning they must be consistent in their actions. After repetitive successful attempts, where the athletes show consistent stability, the coach can walk away and the player can perform independently. Also speaking of stability, uh, we, we can say that uh, to keep stability uh, in one arm handstand, while the base performs difficult transition, I recommend the following exercises. So it's a squats where the free hand touches the floor and uh, also the walking with the handstand. So uh, we can do it like on a straight, like on two hands, uh, two arms handstand, one arm or handstand on the head. So step by step. So we start to talk about some co coordination skills and we transfer to the, at the moment we can start to talk about uh, transition also of the base. So the topic of this part of the presentation is the motion of transition of the base with a 360 degree rotation. We'll review a turn transition to sitting on one arm. So first recommended exercise on that weight. We'll start with the 360 degree turns while you're standing on your feet. Please note the initial effort begins in the wrist. Wrist. And after that, you start. After the starting speed is set, the body, uh, the motion of the base begins by turning of supporting right foot, like here. And the left leg slides to the side. And then, when you're becoming in the deep kneeling lunge position, make sure that the left foot touches the floor with the internal side. Uh, which will give us sufficient stability. Pay attention to the next stage of the element. Put the foot and knee to the side while you are lowering your hand towards the floor. The correct execution of this section allows to maintain stability for both partners when continuing the downward spiral motion. Ensure the left hand is positioned correctly despite the fact that the hand acting as a third point of support uh, the palm doesn't touch the floor and stays a little bit in the air, like, like here in the picture, you can see it. Be aware that the torso of the base should go slightly out of the line with the lower body. It can be seen clearly uh, when the hand touches the floor, whereas the torso is almost 45 degrees to the bottom. Please note that despite the trajectory of the moment which spirals downward, uh, the base right hand and shoulder pushes up, like here. This is extremely important to keep the top supported and stabilized. For the next step, we need to transition to sitting as followed. Using the right leg and left arm, we can track the hip and pelvis. Ensure you continue the spiral movement to the specified, in the specified direction. And altogether, despite that the motion was reviewed in the sections, 
uh, the elements should be performed together without any visible stops, maintaining the consistent speed. After you have worked out each section of the element, proceed to work with the long pole, like we did in the beginning. Believe me, it just, it just looks easy. Then we do it with a kettlebell. Like I said before, we're using in the beginning the weight around like 16 kilograms and now and after we move to the 32, we increase in the weight. And uh, actually 32 kilograms will bring us uh, to the most, most of the reality. When you achieve sufficient stability and accuracy in the transition, you can attempt the element with the top in a pair. You see all motions here happen like with a consistent speed. Now the shapes. Uh, I choose in our presentation to use the flag uh, because it's, it's, it's very popular and uh, you know, uh, always about the flag, it's uh, a lot of conversation how uh, different clubs prefer to do like different ways and techniques. So I will just uh, share with you my experience and uh, what I need to say that uh, a huge part of uh, this kind uh, of uh, this way of development, uh, the flags, uh, was was dealt by by lockdowns unfortunately, and because the the kids cannot go to the gym, uh, coach cannot have the full contact with the with the kids, and uh, with the gymnasts, and uh, we create some little bit uh, different way of learning. So uh, and in this presentation, we will, uh, uh, more than half presentation, we will use the wall to support us. As a, as a point of additional point of support. So first recommended exercise is a clock. Your hand must be placed close to the wall with the T-shaped open legs and lower back should easily be leaning against the wall. And each foot will alternate touching the floor. It's necessary to keep the shoulders in a fixed extent position. Next step will be flag in the tucked position. So ensure the knees are bent to the chest and not to the waist. Trying to lay the pelvis onto the shoulder. So we always train this exercise in both directions to develop symmetrically. Our next exercise is a clock, but uh, with the addition of the second leg being lowered. So I really like this exercise. And this exercise should be in the frontal plane. Ensure the angle between the floor and the upper leg are 90 degrees in this drill. We are working on both laterally flexibility and the correct feeling of the transition. Next exercise, we're working on the sagittal plane. So it's a little bit different. Lowering the leg to the 90 degrees. All you can say the switching the legs in l shape handstand. Now what we do, it's a mix of the both uh, exercises I, I just showed to you. So to transition from the handstand to the flag, I recommend you learn it next to the wall and what we're gonna do. We lower the leg forward to the 90 degrees in the sagittal plane and the left leg and pelvis are lowered sideways in a frontal plane. So here you can see that without any additional support from the side, uh, the gymnast can achieve the shape of the flag. 
For sure, for sure. We are working on blocks. First, we do it on the floor. What I mean on the floor, the one hand is on the floor and the second one slightly touches the, the block. Then on block with a spotting from a coach. And then the gymnast can do it independently. Pay attention to both the trajectory of motion for the legs and the location of the shoulder, which should be stretched out exactly over the hand without any shifting forward, just straight. And uh, after sufficient stability is achieved, you can start to work in the element in pairs. So firstly, we do it on the bended hands. Then we go to the straight. Of course, in the very beginning, we do it with, uh, with a coach, like we did in, with, with uh, one arm in the beginning of presentation. And after that, uh, with time, with many, many repetitions and uh, fixations and holdings and uh, spending a lot of time here, uh, we can do it individually without any help from the side. So one arm handstand is extremely necessary skill that deserves its time and effort to train through repetitions. This presentation proposes systematic training program of development. And based on this material, which is my personal coaching experience with my gymnast, I hope you will achieve the proper result quite fast. So thank you for watching my presentation. I hope you also will like it. And uh, maybe most of you already use some of these drills and uh, I wish you the success. <laughs> so I'm just waiting for your questions. Thank you very much, Rivas, for this presentation, which is very rich in so many uh, exercises. And I'm sure the coaches here have really enjoyed uh, all of them. Um, so one of the goal of uh, this webinar, or really also to uh, um, encourage the, the exchange uh, and uh, the sharing. Uh, so it's now time to give the floor to the participants um, and just please uh, um, do not hesitate to ask any questions or any remarks. Um, and uh, while uh, we are, you are doing this, maybe Lorenzo, you can complete uh, based on your experience um, uh, the, the teaching of the one arm uh, in general, if you have some remarks or. Well, thank you. No, no, I, I don't. It, it was, it was pre pretty much. Uh, everything it, it's uh, what, what I think is that the, the one arm is a, a question of how much time you are willing to spend um, in one arm you know yeah. where, with the assistance of a wall of a coach of a partner uh, it, it's a question of getting the shoulder as strong as possible to get all your body weight and being able to control it so the time you really spend on, on, on that shoulder is really important. Uh, it, it's not something you gain, you get really fast. It's something you need to develop. Um, I really like, as Revaz knows, some of the flag uh, elements, exercises he, he also does. Sometimes I use some, not uh, totally different, uh, sometimes with ankle weights to increase the difficulty and um, make the, the, the side of the gymnast stronger. Um, and I always use the L shape that you was using in the beginning, preferable to the split, just mm -hmm. because that will make the gymnast stronger on, on the side. And only after when they are really, um, you know, uh, experts on doing it, I, I will allow the girls to make it a, a split. Thanks, uh, Lorenzo. Um, we have a few uh, questions coming in. Uh, the first question, 
about the flag. Uh, will those active stretches at the wall be enough to get the flexibility? Or do you recommend additional uh, stretching? Uh, actually, we we'll start to learn the flex uh, after we achieve the necessary flexibility. So uh, yes, we do the few exercises, but uh, they're not like super, super special. So uh, the top should, or gymnast should just stand, uh, sh put the legs like sh shoulder wide and took the weight to the straight arms up and just go slowly, goes to the side. Yeah, first we do it without any additional weights, just to, just with the natural, with the body. And after that, you are just light, light weight. So it's never heavy, nothing. And uh, also uh, when the flag is almost ready and color answer set, you just after that start to, uh, to make it, to add the split. And uh, what we do, uh, what I do, uh, the gymnast sits to the split, took the weight, and tries to go to the side. But no, uh, again, it's not not it's not so fast. You know, everything in the balance, especially one arm, it's 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 not about just pam pam pam. You need to spend time on it. So it's it takes, uh, especially when you're just building it, building the combination, and if you want to move just from two hands ring to the work in one arm, you know, you have to spend a lot of the time during the training for that. Okay, thank you. Um, we have a question from Regis, but maybe uh, Regis, if you could just clarify a little bit. The question was, is the support of the head on the arm is a mistake? Could you clarify your question um, on the Q&A section, Regis, because I do not understand your question. Um, just a question, another question from David, so that Regis can uh, explain a little bit his request. So David asked, um, how do you teach the kids um, the movement on one arm and stand to one arm flag? Um, is explaining the situation in his club. That, uh, he has uh, one kid that is able to do the motion on two arms, uh, um, and they can do the one arm and the one arm flag separately. Uh, but the motion on one arm is something that the girl is struggling for months now. So mm -hmm. normally what I do, I'm just standing on my knees, uh, putting the top, uh, you know, the top stands uh, on the floor. So one hand on the floor, the second one, the left one is on the block. And normally I'm working all of necessary transition. I don't know, a thousand times. Uh, of course, not, not in one day. Yeah, and I do it firstly on the floor. Now, uh, after that, on the blocks. And, you know, uh, with time, I little bit reducing just my support. And uh, I think it what happened. So most important, uh, like, key, key points here, uh, that the shoulder is supposed to be right on the hand. So it, you should keep the line. From, from from the lower part to, to the highest po point of your body. So you just need to spend the time on it. And uh, I think it's, you know, it's a little bit difficult uh, to explain it. You know, every single situation is different. And uh, someone catches it like that and someone needs to, to spend on a balance a lot of time. But uh, you know uh, how I spoke with, uh, with our now the, they have famous handstanders uh, like Valentin Stuerkin uh, or uh, Dima Shine. And you know, uh, both of them, uh, they are far from each other, but uh, they speak, the, they say this similar thing. So one arm, I thought, what drill is like most useful? Just the handstand, just the flag, shape of the flag, just the one arm handstand. So you need to spend a lot, a lot, a lot of time directly on very correct position. And after that, when the position is done, so you just go there. You can make a transition from one side to another one. And especially about the uh, David question, I can say that no, normally uh, someone start with the feet, goes to the side, and someone start like with the with the pelvis. And uh, actually, it's a little bit hard to explain because uh, we have no video example, and uh, so it's just just in my mind what I can see. Well, what I can think about it. 
Okay. Start from the feet or start from the pelvis. Try different uh, different ways and you'll find something. Um, question from Regis was about the position of the head uh, during the one arm. And I suppose it's whether tops or base. Um, is it a mistake that the, the, the head is supporting, is on, is on the arms or is it a good thing or what is the position of the head in one arm? No, it's, you know, we have a completely different examples and uh, it depends uh, the way how the coach see it. But I, I cannot say that it's uh, any additional support when you're just pressing the your face here. So some of the clubs, uh, they perform, they prefer like to move their head a little bit uh, wider from the shoulder. But, uh, you know, even in my club, I have like three, four, five different uh, pairs of groups. And, you know, even in they in them, they have like some different ways to, to explain. So for every single gymnast, it's, it's you know, it's like we have systematic uh, program, of course. But, you know, uh, the body shape is different, the weight is different, There's, the sizes are different, and, you know, even the structure of the elbows are different. So uh, someone has, like, straight elbows, someone, you know, like, a little bit inside and up. So it just uh, depends with the body. And, but for me, for me, it's not any mistake. And, you know, and especially the position of the head, I also have, like, a few few things and few theories about it but uh, you know we have no not enough time here but uh, you know what i completely disagree and uh, also most uh, most of the handstanders i, I was spoke with them uh, who at the moment work in a circus or somewhere else to they think that we need to close uh, our head during the figure handstand so, you know, not a lot of the people agree that, uh, you know, it's it depends on the on the handstand or it's changed the shape of the handstand. So it's just, uh, it's really hard to explain that just in one element, we should cover our head over there. So for me as a coach, I, I, I cannot, I, I don't see any difference, but, but uh, I was spoke with them and they also surprised that in Acro we need to cover the head. Yes, yeah, so the important is to know why you're doing this. So for you, what's important is always that the shoulder is uh, above the wrist. Um. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, also one more thing, I forgot to tell it uh, in my presentation to include this. I, I had the slide, but uh, I don't know why it's, it's missed. Um, a lot of people interesting about how to breathe when you're standing a lot, especially in the flags, in one arm. And uh, what I prefer to do, we we just count it, but uh, with the voice. So the top stands, stands to the flag or to Mexican and try to one, two, three. So by the voice. And uh, in that way, the uh, your body understand how to breathe, breathe in, breathe out and on that moment. Oh, that's so, interesting. So it's a very useful thing. Yeah. Um, we have a question from uh, Tom. Uh, I notice in the video that your gymnasts all stand easily on one hand. I suppose they already learn this on a young age. Uh, when do you start? At what age developing this skill? Uh, the top, top which you uh, which you seen on that video on on this presentation, uh, she does acra for two years, and she she catched uh, the one arm handstand. Uh, I think uh, maybe few few months before the European Championship in Israel. So it's like uh, she was in acra like a uh, few years. Uh, before she does uh, rhythmic, but not so strong, you know, and uh, and believe me, they didn't do there any one arm handstands. So we just spent a lot of time on it, you know, and uh, someone, how I said, someone catches it faster, someone, someone needs longer time. But, you know, uh, I do not see in one arm handstand something very, very, very special. You know, the, the straight handstand, especially, you know, even with the legs together, uh, for me, it's uh, very, very basic. 
So if you can do the normal handstand on two arms, and for the mixed pair, it's much easier, maybe for the women's, you know, and uh, because in a women's pair, especially on the feet or in a pyramid and trio, the top needs to make some balance, you know. In a pair, it's a completely different way because the, the base does all the balance, you know. And uh, I, I don't know, did you notice that uh, in this presentation, I did the one arm with this girl, like legs together. And uh, it was just first time she she tried legs together the handstand. So I just put her to the handstand and tell her what to do. So what we trained before on a wall, she just goes to the line. And after that, uh, the base has power to over the balance. So, and especially when you do in the balance, you, you not just follow the top, you just go in like a little bit in front and bring her back. So uh, in, in example, when you're just holding, when you're a kid, uh, when you're holding the like long pole on your hand over here. So just going a little bit in front and coming back. So that's what's happening also with the balance. So you not just follow the top because you will fall together in that way. Uh, uh, Karin, can I make you a, qu a question to reverse? Of course. Um, do, do you have any special drill to strengthen the wrist of of the tops uh this that's all, all, always a, a sensitive area and it's a, a small and thin yeah, uh, yeah 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 especially with the tops yeah uh you know we we work in a lot with the rope so it's like very very basic and uh, also we're using the you know the uh, little i don't know how to say it, like little heaviest it's like around one, one kilogram and less uh the top just push the uh, put, put the hand on this position so the uh, wrist is in the air and we're just moving up and down so not not to, not to the side no rotation just up and down up and down so it's it's, it's bring us to the normal normal condition so even if we already have some pain we reduce a little bit work uh, on the handstands on the blocks or somewhere else and we going back to the to the working on the wrist just to make it healthy thank you Thank you, Revaz. Um, okay, so dear participants, uh, this is your last chance. We have uh, the chance to have with us uh, Revaz and uh, Lorenzo. So uh, if you want to ask them some uh, other questions, uh, do not hesitate. Um, once again, thank you very much. Um, if we do not have any other questions, um, uh, I would like to really thank the two experts because I think it's a privilege uh, to um, have the possibility to share uh, and to learn from the most uh, talented coaches in Europe. Um, so really, really uh, thank you um, uh, for being uh, here to share this knowledge uh, with us. Um, we, um, we have one more general question, so not uh, really uh, uh, typically um, on the, these two subjects. So maybe it will be the transition with the end, which is very good. Um, and I think this question can go to uh, both of you. Uh, how do you generally structure the training? What is the structure of your training? So I don't know who wants to start. Okay, I, I can start in, in that way. You know, it's, it depends uh, what period it is. So if, if the competitions are far, so we're working on the uh, flexibility classes, we work in the choreography, and we spend the time to create in the new routines, and we're spending the time to more uh, working on cardio because, because we will need it when we'll bring all the elements together. So we were uh, in the beginning after like vacation, like now after New Year vacation, we work in the like very, very basics. So we just first week, we're doing just, just the straight handstands, uh, basic motions together. And uh, if it's groups, we're working like by parts and uh, we're just spending a lot of time just on the basic things if it's after vacation. But if we talk about the like regular training, so it's like uh, uh, if we have training at three, for example, the kids came like 10, 15 minutes before they're doing like uh, their own like 
I, I'm speaking just now, you know, about the senior team. They already know everything. So uh, I, I think it's <laughs> the people interested some. And, you know, but after that, anyway, they're starting like with a little like choreographic warming up. And uh, after that, uh, they go into the pairs. After, the, after that, we go in. Uh, it, it's very close with the, it looks like on the competitions, you know. And after that, we do it routines. Uh, after routines, we go in someone, some, some of the groups needs to go to the lounge, to, do, to the straps to do some elements. And uh, the other one to the balance skills, someone works with the choreographer. And you know, it goes like run by run, <laughs> spinning around when you have a lot of the coaches and a lot of the uh, teams. And uh, after that, we're doing like uh, very special, uh, like physio training, like physical training, physical preparation. But you know, uh, I I prefer to learn all of my bases to you know, uh, to support the top to do uh, presses up, to do one arm, to do all of these skills I show you today. That uh, to how the top does uh, do motions to the every different handstand. So it will be easier to bring them if they will need. Uh, with time to go to be coaches because they have this experience, these feelings already from very beginning. And, you know, uh, they have like uh, not one view, just, just, just as a base, you know, they are working like as a basis, as well as a coaches, you know, as well, uh, they support each other. And uh, it's, it's, it's very nice things. So that's in that way we, we, we do our training. So normally when it's preparation for the worlds and Europeans, uh, for the high level competitions, even for nationals. Sometimes we're working like uh, 10 trainings in a week. So it's not like very regular. It's, you know, and especially last year, it was, uh, it was very, very difficult to keep your gymnast in a good shape because, you know, uh, you expect that competition is going to be in two months and after that in three months and after that the lockdown, after the gym closes. And, you know, in a, so many nice pairs of groups in Russia, you know, uh, the tops became the middle ones because the, there was age of maturity and uh, they, it's life. But, you know, normally like MMA fighters or UFC fighters, when you, when they, I, I, that's why I told to my gymnast, you know, when you have pl planet like uh, battle with someone, just we can say it like that. And, uh, you know, it, it's like postponed because of some reasons so just think in that way like be be professional so you should be in shape and it's that's what you need to do that that's what i can recommend and say to the to the other coaches working with their gym just to support and you know this this time uh, we need to support each other and you know i'm very very lucky that we have uh, this kind of uh, webinars and we can share and it was so interesting you know i was watched all full one hour with Lorenzo was told about the twisting and it was, you know, so interesting because we cannot uh, see each other for the, for the long time. But I, I think, uh, I hope this year, everything will be, will be go better. So, and we <laughs> will see each other soon. And I also, I want to go to Maya. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I hope, so. I and, hope uh, we... maybe so something happens between there. Yeah. We, we have here uh, Cesar Salvadori, who is a, uh, uh, the organizer of the next uh, world championships and uh, uh, I would like to say hello to Cesar and uh, he's working hard to make it happen and we really have to thank you uh, Cesar and all the staff uh, in Switzerland uh, because we really need to have some goals um, and to make the transition uh, with, uh, with the, the first uh, the original question about the structure of the training um, I can say also that um, you, you can uh, go back on the webinar we did in, uh, I think it was December, uh, with Lorenzo, oh no, November, sorry, about uh, uh, the plan, the planification. And uh, so, because we could start also for another four hours about how to structure the training. I'm sure our two experts will have a lot, lot to say about it. Um, but uh, in any case, all these uh, webinars, I have to remind you um, that uh, you can find them on the YouTube channel. Uh, so it will be there in two or three days on the YouTube channel of European Gymnastics. So if you go on the website 
of uh, European Gymnastics, you can follow the link. And on the YouTube channel, you can have all these webinars uh, that are recorded and you can review them. Um, so that's also a very uh, good opportunity from uh, European Gymnastics uh, to uh, uh, continue with this uh, sharing. And I agree that more than ever, we need to share all of this. Um, I really would like to thank you uh, once again, Tevaz and Lorenzo. Uh, it was very great uh, and wonderful time together. Uh, I would like also to thank the participant because your questions are also make it uh, uh, more interactive. And uh, I would like to um, uh, give you another appointment to continue in this direction with uh, uh, some uh, other experts from Europe, the best coaches in Europe. So we will do uh, the next um, webinar will be the 6th of February. Uh, we will talk, it will be in the continuity of this one about uh, how to build the complexity in acrobatics. So the 6th of February will be uh, about balance. So we will talk about the Mexican, the planche, uh, the mounts, the motions, transitions for trios, etc. And uh, we will uh, have another uh, webinar only about dynamic, um, where we will discuss the double and triple rotations from platform, from uh, double pitch. We will uh, discuss also the, the, the catches uh, uh, in hands and all these kind of things. So that will be the 27th of March. Um, so thank you all for your participation. Thank you, Evaz Lorenzo. Uh, wish you uh, all the best. and. Uh, uh, we will uh, see each other very soon. Thank you very much, everybody, and bye-bye. Stay safe. Bye-bye.